Anyway, um, good morning or good evening again. My name is Shadow. And I'm Carrie from Sadao Youth in the Philippines. And I'm Stuti. I'm an international student from India at Rice University. And as we all already know, we have a very special guest here and we're very honored to be interviewing her today. So our guest for today has been a driving force towards pushing forth women empowerment, community building, and inclusivity, all in the name of serving the greater good of which she now calls her home, Toledo, Ohio. And she was born and raised in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, up until she was 19, when she migrated to the United States to pursue her bachelor's degree at the University of Toledo. And as a lover of research during the accomplishment of her doctoral dissertation, uh, she formed a focus group of 18 women with the aim of dissecting organizational culture and community. But what transpired after was indeed a happy accident, as our guest has said so herself, as this gave birth to the nonprofit organization anchored in networking and providing professional development opportunities to women of diverse backgrounds, also known as Women of Toledo. So Women of Toledo prides itself as a nexus for mentoring, peer networking, and advocating for diversity, inclusion, and women economic empowerment. Now, their latest initiative, Her Hall, which, we, which you've seen earlier, it was initially conceptualized in 2016. It's an extension of Women of Toledo's passion for community building by providing various support services, volunteer opportunities, and local resources to aid and uplift women-led businesses and organizations in the area. In line with this, she has also openly advocated for the passing of the Pay Equity Act in the city of Toledo, which is a critical step to closing the gender pay gap and improving women's economic status. Her dedication towards creating an equ equitable future for women doesn't stop here. As a business owner, she has helped six women from all over the world to break the cycle of poverty within their families by giving them quality work through her company, Lemon and Lime Incorporated, which is an outsourcing company that provides administrative and virtual assistance to businesses and individuals. We are indeed very fortunate to have her in our midst as she also highlights the importance of the youth's participation in the women's movement. Women of Toledo's Young Women's Circle Initiative caters to young women aged 12, 12 to 26 with diverse backgrounds, creating an avenue where they can harness their passion and skills to establish their purpose and belonging in the community. Now, prior to managing Women of Toledo, her professional career includes being the Chief of Operations for SONA Professional Network for Women, Program Director for Paid Forward Foundation, Special Project Coordinator for the Toledo Metropolitan Council of Government, and the President of the American Association of University Women Toledo Branch. In addition, she was recognized as the power of women for the Junior League of Toledo, served as a chairperson for the Secor Artist Networks, SONA Network of Women Board Members, steering, uh, steering Committee for Women of the World Symposium, and an ambassador for the Momentum Northwest Ohio Young Women Summit. Her work for Women of Toledo has also been rightly acknowledged when she was nominated, sorry, nominated for UN Women Empower Global, uh, Global Champion for Change in 2016-17. Uh, in 2020, she was also one of six women out of more than 100 nominees being honored at the 419 Women Are Rad Night. And then in 2021, she was the recipient of the prestigious Regional Jefferson Award. Currently, she serves as the mayoral appointed executive member for the City of Toledo Human, right, uh, Human Relations Commission. And of course, she also serves City of Toledo's CEDAW ordinance, which aims to encourage the government to be more gender equitable. We're very happy to welcome Nina Corder to Cities for CEDAW History and Futures Project. And thank you so much for being with us here today. Wow, the honor is, thank you so much. It's always awesome to hear someone, um, you know, talk about you. I'd be like, wait, 
you know, so it's always great. Thank you so much for this opportunity. And I'm so excited to be having this conversation with all of you. Okay, thank you so much. Um, if you're ready, we can begin with the questions that we have for you today. Okay, sure. Uh, so let's start with the very simple, very first question. What motivated you to establish Women of Toledo? Oh, wow. Um, so as it mentioned in my bio, it started it um, as a part of my research for my dissertation. I was studying organization leadership, um, focusing on culture diversity and looking at the organization culture. Um, so it was really interesting enough that, um, you know, I was looking on what type of organization and group that I really want to research. Um, as, as it mentioned in bio, you know, I, I do have a business, so to help pay for my grad school. Um, you know, throughout my business, I have to do a lot of networking uh, because, you know, network, networking is network is your net worth, right? So you're making connection. Um, so trying to understand. So I join a lot of organization like the Chamber of Commerce, uh, Women Entrepreneurship Network, Business Networking International, since you're all, all over the world. So you probably know BNI, um, Rotary, you know, a service organization. Um, so, so that I can network. Um, you know, I'm an extrovert. So, you know, I would just walk in, in the room, you know, just introduce myself with a smile in my face and say, hey, I'm Nina. Here's my organization, my business. I'm looking for this. And just make that connection, right? Um, because human, we gravitate to similarity. So we try to like, you know, try to coexist. And one day, um, a guy, <laughs> of course, a man, always have to challenge you, right? However, he's not doing it intentionally. He's a great friend of mine. And he said, you are the only woman of color in this room. And I look around and I was like, wait a minute, you are right. In the room is um, whether white male or white female, but I don't really see a lot of women of color, especially immigrant women. So I was thinking like, okay, where is all professional immigrant women network. Um, so I end up having this conversation with my chairperson of my professor about my experience um, and trying to understand that. He said, hey, you still looking uh, for a focus group or subject that you wanna study Then Why don't you study that? Why don't you study culture diversity in a networking organization? However, you need to have a control group. Um, so that's how I created the 18 women leaders that are coming from different, different organizations to help out with my research to understand culture and leadership diversity. And I want to understand that how do you challenge the status quo of having a diverse group of community coming together to network. Um, after six months, um, you know, from you know, focus group, it become a listening session. From listening session, it become more a networking group. And the, the group just become involved and it become an organization itself. So at the end of eight months after I got all my data, you know, writing up all my dissertation, finishing up, wrapping it up. Then uh, before that, let me share the finding. The finding is, you know, it's not that organization doesn't allow diverse group of people to network. But as I mentioned earlier, we are human connection, human gravity to similarity. People tend to coexist with the social group that they become aware of. Um, and they usually invite people to come to the group that someone they already know. Um, so then I got involved with like African American Chamber, Hispanic Chamber, then you get to see different culture group that you know, network. Um, so going back the eight months later and one of the women called me and said, hey, are we still meeting again? Because from that group, I get to meet a lot of people, mostly diverse group of people. And I say, no, we just a research group for the dissertation. You did sign the IRB. And this lady was like, wait, are you telling me we just your guinea pig for your research study? I think you just start your own organization culture here. You should keep going. 
Uh, so organically, that's how it started. That's how Women After Leaders started. So very organic, but very data-driven, very research-based. And until today, eight years later, we still do a lot listening session, focus group, conversation within our community to understand what type of services and program we should offer. Uh, because at Women After Leader, we believe that you should meet your community where they are, how they want it, and when they want it. Um, so we can become more efficient at servicing uh, their, you know, their needs. So that's how Women After Leader started. That was great. Um, so in line with this, why did you decide to devote yourself to Sedao? Okay, so um, so fast forward about 2016, I believe, um, you know, I'm still self-proclaimed researcher. I like to research, I like to study. And in 2016, um, I had an opportunity where Obama took over the office to serve the White House Council of Women and Girls. Um, and from that opportunity, open it up, uh, my connection with United Nations Women. Um, so through UN Women, um, I did that Global Champion for Change um, Fellowship Program uh, where we work on women economic empowerment. And then one of my colleagues of the fellow was working on SIDA. So that was the first time that I heard about it. I'm like, okay, so because that is the campaign that she's working on. And I was working on a campaign on women economic empowerment in the city. Um, so I got involved with that and trying to learn. And um, that's kind of my first real exposure on, about SIDA. Um, and then in 2016, an organization called Zanta of Toledo, um, you know, another women's organization and their advocacy chairperson reached out to me and say, hey, we know that you are connection somehow. Uh, we, you and women, have you heard about SIDA? And we are thinking about um, putting a committee together to work on this ordinance for City of Toledo. So without that, I'm like, yep, I know about that. And it's interesting that you have a chairperson that who want to work on it. So I say, yeah, I'm interested in looking at that. So we did a forum, again, going back to like making sure that this is something that the city want it, not we want it, because we as a leader, it's really good coming out with a strategy plan on how things should happen. Um, so we figured that we did a forum and have a conversation with our community. So about 150 uh, people attended that forum um, from local organization, women's group, state government. And then we find out that's a, a lot of interest of people want to work on this and they say it's necessary for our city. Um, so the next action plan that we start our steering committee. Um, this is like way before COVID. So it's been quite some time for us. So uh, when we talked about this, yeah, he was like, well, I'm surprised that finally after three years. So there's a lot going on. Like, you know, we only meet once a month and then we divide the working group into um, different, different subjects to be able to work on it. Um, and since you're only working once a month and it's all volunteer, um, so it takes quite some time for the group to really get into a first draft of the for the ordinance. Um, so I got to look at my project is more looking at different city and looking at the ordinance. And it's so funny that you're talking about it. I'm just looking at city of Toledo ordinance because ours just got passed in March. Um, I'm looking at it like from the original that we proposed to the council and the one that they revised. And I wasn't happy to tell you the truth, but I'm looking at it right now because the outcome of the CEDA that we purpose is um, we want the city of Toledo to create a gender equity commission and put a budget and hire someone to really work this with us. Um, so I'm really excited uh, to really look into that a little bit more closer. 
Um, so yeah, that, that's how I got exposed to CEDA through Santa Toledo. And I'm simply grateful. They are awesome organization, been around for almost 100 years. Um, and they are like a mentor to me to really kind of help me um, get to know CEDA more closely. That's great. Uh, thank you so much for that. Um, in line with that, may I may we ask like what were the differences in the past ordinance and what would you say you think was missing in the first ordinance? How what, how do you plan on going about that? Um, so I did not get to dive deeper a little bit. Our ordinance was about 42 pages, but this ordinance is only about 15 pages. Um, instead of a specific on you know the issue. Uh, because I work on the gender pay gap, uh, pay equity act resolution was a part of something that I researched and that that is something that is very dear to my heart. Uh, equal work, equal pay, right? Um, you know, as many of you know, in United States, women's only making 82 cents equal to women, a man, a dollar. Um, so I was working on that to topic. So right now, our ordinance is pretty much very general, doesn't really have specific issue that they are looking at. Um, they did define intersectionality, which is, I love that, uh, because I do, um, and then racial discrimination, gender equity, how we define women, and then um, discrimination against women. So that is like definitely something. The definition is still there. And then what is the local principle of CEDA, what we really want to look at. Um, but at least the Gender Equity Commission is there. So step by step. So at least the Gender Equity Commission. So once we have that, and they were in the middle of process right now, hiring the manager, it's so funny that we having this interview. I just check in with the mayor office. I say, hey, we got this ordinance passed in March, and right now it's about June 27. What's going on? Where's your gender equity? Um, so, and then they say they just hired a new director for diversity, equity, inclusion. Uh, so the next step is hiring the gender equity commission. So once they did that, the, the mayor will appoint the commissioner, and then the commissioner will start working on some of, you know, uh, action plan that we have in this ordinance. So it's a little bit process, but a lot of checking in. Um, so definitely you wanna make sure that you don't just work on the ordinance, but you also have to make sure that they are accountable and make sure that they follow through. And as many of you know, it's always a process when it comes to city government. <laughs> so. It's so nice to actually see work being done. So often, you know, these things happen and you don't really see the results that you were expecting. And that's obvious that there's parts of that happening as well with, you know, not the entire proposed ordinance passing, but it's good to hear that there's actual work happening. However, since you mentioned intersectionality and obviously you're a woman of color, you're an immigrant, do you think CEDAW does a good job of addressing intersectionality and how would you say it does that? Yeah, I definitely believe so. Um, I really enjoy working on it and looking at different different CD and more and more conversations surrounding intersectional and immigrants, uh, women and women of color. BIPOC is uh, in a lot of resolution and ordinance. Even recently, we just uh, celebrate here City of the Little Immigrant Heritage Month. Um, you know, making sure that, you know, that conversation is already happening and will continue happening. So um, I'm, I'm really excited to really see how this come out and what other city is doing. Um, you know, to be one of the 17 in the United States, you know, I think that's, that's an accomplishment for City of Toledo. Okay, so thank you so much for that, Ms. Nina. Um, I guess we just want to further hear uh, your elaboration on this. Um, how did you first learn about the cities for Sidao? Just can you walk us through um, how you first encountered it again? So my first encounter is through United Nations Women. Uh, just because I was involved, I was working on that proposal for the Global Champion for Change project. 
However, I'm just listening it like all of you just on the screen and someone's doing presentation. I was like, this is really interesting. So I dive deeper a little bit and find out that the United States did not ratify it. And I'm like, wait a minute, you know? Um, so that's really interesting. So I kind of dive a little bit and look at all the countries. I almost want to pack my bag and just move to European Union country, right? But <laughs> you can't really do that. Um, so, you know, I end up dive deeper and then Zanta Toledo reached out to me um, about a year and a half later and say, hey, we know you are connected with UN and then uh, we are working on CEDA. I believe you're familiar with it. Are you interested to be a part of the committee? So I joined the committee, um, you know, and then we meet once a month and then we'll start working on that. So that's how I got exposed. And now, um, the more that I got to learn about it, now I learn about the CD of CEDA, organ like groups um, with Dr. Sun Yang. So I'm really excited to see what else we can do and help support other CD, uh, perhaps even support the country, United States, ratify this, right? <laughs> so, yeah. I have big dream. I like to challenge the status quo. Um, so yeah, a lot of uh, city of Toledo or uh, a lot of people usually was like, okay, Nina's on the call. Who wanna think, who wanna have conversation with her? So I like to challenge and look things at differently. I think that is um, make it very interesting, especially for diverse group, uh, diverse women. I think we, we as a woman of color, women who travel and all around the world, we see things in a different perspective. So it's very important that we speak up, um, you know, and bring up to attention any conversation or discussion that we want to change. That's amazing. Uh, Nina, again, on behalf of all women around the world and in, <laughs> the, in the States, thank you so much for all that you do. Um, so in regard to your time in the UN and UN Women, have you participated in any Cities for Sidao training during CSW? And do you think these were important networking spaces for your campaign? Yeah, I do believe so. Um, I did not get the opportunity yet to get involved. So I hope this is one of many. So I'm really excited to really um, get involved and learn what other cities doing other than just doing research and looking at other city ordinance. Um, you know, I think that's where our shortcoming, we, we kind of work back what we can do it ourselves, did the research, look at other city, working on the ordinance and now it got passed. Then we want to be a part of the network and see how we can keep on moving forward and continue uh, getting involved. Since we're talking about the UN doing things at the national and international level, and given how many steps back the US just took with overturning Roe, uh, does Toledo, I know it's still early and we're all still kind of processing our emotions about it. Does Toledo have a plan on how they're going to uh, maybe work around this decision, see what they can do to support women right now, especially given that Ohio is is a red state and it's likely that we're going to see some not so great rulings in the near future. Yeah, um, I know. So right now, I believe a lot of all my friends in advocacy, they are still grieving. Um, you know, I, I just I just post something on my social network um, and I say progress is sometimes it's not linear. Um, you know, sometimes you you think you are progressing, but then you regress, you know, and then you always feel like one step forward, three step backward. Um, so that's really interesting conversation. It's so funny since Friday, we were just checking in with each other, how we feel and things like that. But I'm very optimistic. Um, I feel, I do believe that, um, you know, we have to keep moving forward you know, you have to keep moving forward. You always have to have hope and you have to believe that you can create a more equitable city, you know, state and world. And we need to ensure that women's equal access to and equal opportunity in all areas, all sector. 
in all ecosystem. Uh, one thing for sure is we need to have more women running for office. We need more women to have a seat at the table and we need more women to make that decision for us and ourselves too. It's so funny that during my bio, you were talking about how women after Lido have a young women after Lido. Um, young women after Lido summer program right now, which is women aged 12 to 17 that we have in our city right now, teaching women to play with power tools to build a chair. You know, we are teaching them how to build a chair. It's a part of a project, a seat at a table. So you probably heard about that. You know, where Congresswoman Shelley was saying that if you don't see a seat at the table, bring your folding chair. And we was like, heck with folding chair. We help you build the chair. So they are doing a work working right now and building a chair so that they know that they can always have a seat at any table. They can always see that said, that's a chair that I built and I'm going to build it. And I'm going to continue building that chair in any table because tables were the decision to make representation, you know, our power, we need to be able to do that. Um, so we, we got to start the new generation young and keep moving forward. So every time any uh, work that I do, I'm thinking about what can I leave? What is the legacy and what is the work? You know, because my time is probably ours. You know, I will never get eco pay, eco work, right? Because it takes another what? 236 for us women to get equal right, but I'm doing it for you all, for this young generation. So we need to be able to do that. Um, my favorite hashtag is live as you climb. Um, so definitely looking at who else can you bring with you? Who else can you live as you continue climbing? Yeah. Um, so that's what we're doing here in Toledo. <laughs> That is very inspiring, Miss Nina, especially, you know, for the involvement of the youth. And I particularly like what you said of, you know, involving more women. We need more women and the decision-making process. And that is very important for us to hear. But in, in line with this, just with the uh, very controversial decision of the Supreme Court overturning Roe versus Wade, um, and this is somewhat a violence against you know, basic human rights, especially for women's basic human rights. So in what ways do you think uh, Toledo's citywide action plan address the need to integrate human rights principles into the city's overall operations? Um, so I'm really excited, like I mentioned with the Gender Equity Commission, um, you know, the mayor's gonna be appointed 12 seat so we hope and we make sure that we intentionally make sure that who is going to have that seat at the table, um, you know, and making sure that we have diverse women, national women, you know, LGBTQ represent, BIPOC, making sure that it's all represent. Um, of course, I want more women than men at <laughs> the the commissioner. All we can do is just put together right um but you are building relationship um you know making connection you know how i mentioned how women up the leader built on building that connection um connection is i'm pretty sure that you have heard this before it's not about um about just not just about who you know it's also about, it's not just about what you know it's about who you know right uh, we all know that, okay? Um, you can have three letters behind your name, but if you don't know someone that have influence, how can you get that? So the last couple of years, we've just been building relationship to organization with the city government, city council, other organization. We talk about her hub. Her hub is a collaboration of all women's businesses, uh, women's organization, women's nonprofit collaborating together so we can build each other power because my strength might be their weaknesses, their weaknesses might be my strength. So we can pull that sauce together so we can work together so we can continue it. Um, so when Roe and Wade overturn, um, we definitely check in with each other. Hey, how are you doing? You know, what can we do to support you, especially for organization that is in health and wellness, um, you know, and then making sure that we are checking it. And then, of course, um, go through that grieving process and say, okay, what do we need to do next? What can we do and how can we rally this behind the support? 
So I'm excited because of the CEDA, we now gonna have gender equity commission. And from that, um, we can make sure that we can continue advocating for things that is matter to us. Um, that is the most important thing. No one else can speak up for us except for us, right? So we need to make sure that we continue uh, working towards that. Um, I, I believe that uh, building relationship, uh, making sure that um, you put surrounding your time, talent, resources, and influence. That's my four keyword. You know, making sure that you have that time, talent, resources, and influence. Um, who can you figure it out that you can use your influence and who have influence that can help you out? Um, so you want to rally. That's why we rally around women-owned businesses because they have a lot of resources. So they can help support this too. Um, when we will have that issue with the access childcare, um, and we rally behind all, all the childcare provider. Imagine that if we just shut down for one day, not providing childcare and have all women outside in the road. I bet you the men will start coming out and say, hey, you guys need to come to work, then help us out, make sure that we have accessible childcare. That will open the, the, you know, the childcare so that we all can go work and do things together. So I don't know, you know, that is just some idea. I might be off tangent right now. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but you know, you have to continue. You have to have hope um, and making sure that um, you, you support that, you rally behind um, issue and things that matter to you and matter to your community. Carrie, I think you muted. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, I was just saying how I love that. I just like to highlight how you encourage people to honor their feelings, their strong feelings, and then encourage them to get to work. I mean, um, we often, women are always deemed as too emotional. And, you know, emotion, emotions are not a bad thing. They um, empower us and it's, it, it fires up this passion within ourselves to actually get work done. And I think you of all people is a testament to the many things that women can do despite and because of their emotions that people always make us feel bad about. So um, going back to the campaign and in line with what you said about building relationships and building that connection, who did you first contact to start the campaign locally or in your organization? Okay, so we did the forum. So of course we rally the community behind us. Um, you know, you have to, first of all, you have to make sure when you build your committee that you understand what is your strength and what your weaknesses. As I mentioned, I'm an extrovert. Um, my predictor index, I'm a persuader. Um, so, you know, I will be able to rally a lot of group. And since our organization do a lot of program services, we are really group. We are grassroots, so we do a lot of canvassing and gathering the community together. So the first step is gathering all the women. They say, "Hey, we need you need to we need you your support to rally behind this, right?" So we did the forum. One hundred and fifteen women attended, which is like not just women, a lot of leaders coming in, um, and then making sure that they have conversation and we got to know a lot of. Uh, city official and the council member is coming. So we intentionally put each council member in each table where we have women can have conversation with them, right? So being intentional, being strategic about that. Um, so, um, and then we also have He For She, you probably heard that as another United Nations campaign that launched by Emma Watson, He For She. So we also have allies, making sure that our allies there too, that's supporting us. Um, so we did the forums and then we know that we have that support and then we um, two of the council members that attended that forum and say, what can I do to support you? You know, instead of us coming to them and say, here's what we want, da, 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 present it, have your community come and gather and they will come here and say, this is a great work. How can we support you? There you go. So once they say, how can we support you? They say, well, we need you to endorse this. We need you to sponsor this and champion this. Um, so we are lucky that we have very diverse group of council members. 
Uh, and now we have more women in our city council compared to men. So it was really a good year. Um, and then one of the council members said, yes, I'll champion this and work with you. Um, and she attended some of our meetings that we made monthly to make sure that, you know, what is alliance and things like that. Um, and then, of course, uh, COVID happened. So, you know, you kind of redirect it a little bit. Um, and then when after the world opened up back up, we kind of pick up back up and we reach out to the city council again. Um, you know, the council member to say, hey, would you want to support this again? Um, so we we kind of put the ordinance, like we put a draft together, take a look at it. We work with another organization called ABLE. Um, ABLE is um, ability for the Opportunity Law Association. So that's a couple of lawyers that is a part of our committee that help put the ordinance together, draft. Um, and then we put in front of the council again. Um, the Santa Toledo is really good at going in front and getting meeting, speaking to the mayor, speaking to the city council. Um, and then in early February, first we thought that we going to get it passed in November. Um, but then, you know, a lot going on at that time with the election and things like that. So in March, we were saying that it's perfect how, um, you know, during Women's History Month, and then we say, hey, March 15 is equal pay. You need to pass this <laughs> equal pay. And it was International Women's Day that month. Um, and so, yeah, and the council member, uh, Dr. Whitman, say, yeah, let's put this in front of the council and see what happened. And it got voted. It got passed on March 15 on equal pay day. Um, so we were really excited about it. And then we were doing a press conference. And Dr. Sun Yang came and celebrated with us. Um, it was really great. Yeah, but it is a process. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Um, we have changed a couple committee member, um, and then we want to keep going because remember when I mentioned that we have two uh, advocacy committee from Santa Toledo was working on this. Uh, very dear mentor, Dr. Adina Jones and Daya Rima Evans. Um, and Daya, Daya Rima Evans did pass away like right before this got passed. Um, so it kind of gives us a burning desire that this is a part of a legacy that we need to continue working on this. Um, so, yeah. So we've repeatedly touched on how, you know, all of this is a process. There's a lot of red tape. There's also just a lot of rallying that needs to be done. Uh, and you kind of touched on how the entire passing for the ordinance went, but we kind of wanted to concretely talk about what was the timetable for passing the CEDA ordinance from start to finish. So how did the work begin? Who was at the table about these conversations? Things like that. Cool. So funny that I have a timeline here. So let me just see if I can refresh this. So um, we started in 2018, late 2018, when the committee get together in May. Um, so from 2018 to 2019, the committee meet on monthly basis. So we create a working group and then we research on other CD. Um, I, in particular, was resigned for Pittsburgh, so I was able to look at what Pittsburgh is doing and what we really want to do and looking at other cities in the Midwest. Um, and then we look at city of Toledo. So Toledo is a city with basic law prohibiting discrimination that is already in place, but yet we don't really have any ordinance that um, really protecting women, especially women in law enforcement, um, and especially on the pay equity. So we kind of made, we have three um, issues that we really want to tackle. Equal pay for women, violence against women, and support for family and caregiver. Um, so we have a couple stack that we presented here. In the leader, women make up 52%. And I'm pretty sure that we are beyond that. That was beginning from census. And I think women is more to population around the world. Yeah, we are. Um, but yet, 
women in law enforcement earn less than their male counterparts, women in firefighting and protective service earn less than male counterparts, women in healthcare support job earn less than male counterparts, uh, women are more likely to live in poverty. Uh, violence against women have increased even since COVID, as many of us know. And then we also have a local stat from Safe Place and Rape Crisis Center estimate one in four women experience sexual violence during their, their life. Um, so that is kind of our talking point that we use a lot. You know, data doesn't lie. Um, you know, and data is very important in any research, any project, any audited resolution or whatever we try to work on. And I have this word that my team always um, make fun of because every time we do program services, I always say, don't forget the survey. And my favorite was like, you can't manage what you can't measure. Plain and simple. You can't manage what you can't measure. If you can't manage it, how are you managing it? So we need to know how to manage it, things that we can measure. Um, so during that 2019, when we finished our first uh, rough draft of the Toledo SIDA ordinance, uh, we did another forum. And this time the forum, we include city council member, all the city government that would like to sponsor the ordinance. Um, and we have about 100, 100 people attended that one. Um, and then, of course, I mentioned COVID happened. Then in March 2020, we pick up back up. Um, and then the draft did get changed that we include intersectional section. We put a budget request for the study. We put a steering committee to be more involved. And then the establish of gender equity commission and then request a commission and staff person. Um, so our goal is really just to get the ordinance in front of city council, get organized, and then make sure the ordinance is presented. Um, so 2021, uh, October 2021, the committee reconvenes, and then we meet with the council member who introduced another council member that would sponsor this. Um, and then we thought November 19, that November 9, that it'll get passed. Uh, but then the city government said that, well, we need to revise this a little bit and we need to work around more on gender equity issue. That's why how I mentioned earlier, I'm looking at the original one and now I'm looking at this one to really compare it how, what is a lot of the different on that. Um, March 2022, the Toledo City Council announced See the ordinance will go public on March 4th. And then we were asked to present it in front of city council on March 8th on International Women Day. Then Equal Pay Day, March 15th, the city council voted and signed CEDA. Um, I have this timeline because I'm trying to look at like if there's any gap, uh, what's happening. And I noticed that, which is really good that city council picked uh, when to vote, when to sign, when to present surrounding the big, big event, International Women's Day, Equal Pay. So of course, you know, we have to do everything surrounding public relations. Um, so yeah, and then currently the update status, which I mentioned last week that um, we have a new director right now for DEI, um, the city of Toledo just uh, restructure their department. Um, so right now they do have DEI, Diversity Equity Inclusion Department, where they're gonna put the Gender Equity Commission under it. Um, so they are planning to make sure that um, we have the first commission meeting approved, appointed by August. So that's all I have for now. Yeah, and I believe that um, Dr. Sun Yang and Mary Steiner, President of the United Nations Association, did have meeting uh, with the city of Toledo in May. So we got passed in March and in May they got met. They met in May and they did provide valuable information that letting us know that Toledo is a little bit ahead because we are dedicating a position and someone in 
our uh, commissioner to really work on this legislative. So don't just get it passed, but you, you know, we create a commissioner and a position, a paid position. So the budget is there. City government right now is not just passing ordinance, but they provide also budget to have someone working on it. So I think we we have been um, really tried to be intentional on that. Okay, thank you so much for that, Ms. Nina. Um, I think just circling back onto your um, exposure and your connection with CD Sport, CEDA, um, what was your involvement with it? Like how often did you meet? Did you hold public hearings? And did you also have contact with other cities that have passed the CEDA legislature such as Los Angeles or San Francisco? Yeah. Um... So I was involved a lot because I was a part of one of the uh, founding committee for it, um, you know, and um, I contact city of Pittsburgh because that was my CD that I was working on um, to do research and other than that I have not been involved in any of the CD yet. Um, but right now it's really fun to really not really fun. I mean it's really great that we know there's other CD that we can build network upon so we can have other CD uh, get passed. I don't know how many other questions you had, but maybe we wanna do one more so that we can give the other people on the call a chance to ask Nina any questions. Is that okay? Um, Okay, so does anyone else, uh, did you guys have one more question or? So if you just give us a minute, maybe we can oh, figure out which one we want to prioritize because we did have about 10 more questions. Oh, no. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> we can okay. talk to you all day, Nina. <laughs> oh, wow. And I was like, oh, you got 10 more questions. Wow. <laughs> Um, maybe while you guys are deciding what your last question will be, we can open it up to anyone else who has a question for Nina. Yeah, definitely. Thanks. Okay. Well, then we have more for your questions then. I love someone putting on the chat saying that men can bring their folding chair. <laughs> That's good. Oh, so <laughs> That's really well done. Um, yeah, go ahead, Lillian. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Lillian. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I was wondering, um, like, what piece of advice you would give or like what you would warn for someone um, for like aspiring CDAW cities, for people who are trying to create CDAW task forces and implement CDAW in their own cities? Oh no, I think Nina is frozen. <laughs> Okay, let's give her a moment to come back. Sorry to cut off your questioning, but it was really great and her answers were amazing. So thank you. While we're waiting for Nina to come back, there's one piece of business I needed to wrap up with you all. Um, we need one volunteer to um, assist Sophia in interviewing Gail James on Monday, on uh, Tuesday the 5th. Do we have one volunteer for that? Stuti was going to do it, but she did today's instead. Oh, welcome back, Nina. You guys can think about who will volunteer. Well, Nina's <laughs> back. Um, yes. I apologize. I'm not sure why the internet just dropped. No worries. Did you hear Lillian's question? Or, oh, okay. Do you want to say it again? Oh, I was wondering, like, what piece of advice or warning would you give to someone who's trying to start implementing CEDAW in their city? Like, something you wish you knew. Something I wish I knew. Um, definitely um, 
you you have to make sure you right. you can do this alone definitely i would say that you need to create a committee um you know if you want create a committee and then when you create a committee that you might want to be more intentional who are you not you want to invite everybody but you have to be intentional and see who can work on what and their time commitment so i did mention the for time talent resources and influence um, that is really good to really look at like who you want to be able to work this with you. Um, I was grateful enough that I got invited to the table um, because I work on intersectional conversation here and then I have uh, connection and influence with the city government because I'm a part of the human relation commissioner, which is appointed by the mayoral office. So it's very intentional that, you know, that Zanta Toledo Advocacy kind of invite me to be a part of that. We also have someone who is working on domestic violence here. Um, she is an executive director for uh, shelter here in Toledo. We have someone from ABLE. So, you know, that we can have a lawyer that we really draft and look at this, who volunteer their time. And then we also have someone from youth um, who work with young people, uh, LGBTQ. So we make sure that, and we also have the higher institution, University of Toledo, gender women study involved in this too. Um, so making sure that um, who you can rally around, and you don't want to limit yourself to invite as many people. That's why we did a forum and say, hey, you want to do this? Who want, and then we send a follow up email and say, who want to be a part of this? You know, our first meeting, we have like 30 committee. Um, and then we start dividing the working group and looking at what needs to happen and things like that. So definitely making sure that um, you make the connection and collaborate with others. I think you'll be more successful. And then when we presented in city of Toledo, um, we have 17 letter of support from 17 um, NGO nonprofit organization here in Toledo working in different different area. Uh, we have testimonial um, from the community and women and um, people from a lot of influence that support this. Um, so yeah, you know, making sure that you're using your network. I and I think so passion much. too. Sorry to add. I definitely say passion too. You gotta have passion to work on a uh, women's issue. And um, you gotta be angry too. <laughs> I mean, like, of course, like we are angry, right? Um, and you'll probably say that. I don't know whether I can see Jessica, just let me know. But we are badass women. So, you know, you, you need to have a badass woman if you wanna work on things like this. Um, so, that is definitely, I say, passion. Um, yeah, you know, because you want to sleep at night and making sure that you're doing something good for your, yeah, you got to be angry. There you go. Definitely. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I love that. Um, You know, so touching on being badass women and using their anger and their passion for the good. We'd like to close by asking what were the biggest challenges in this campaign? And um, just like women, do it um how did you overcome these like where did you get the support for it so definitely know your boundaries um definitely knows uh, what are you good at you know what do you love what does the world need <laughs> so you know answering that three question and always thinking like how can you add value to what you're working on um you know and understanding that where your strength and your weaknesses and using it to, to make sure that you add value to anything that you use. Um, so I, I'll definitely making sure that um, I don't do, I don't know all, you know, and then asking people to help you. You know, we women sometimes afraid to just say, hey, I need your help uh, because we think that we can do it all. I always mention to all our women's group, women network, yes, we are badass. Uh, we can do anything that we want, but we can't do everything. Um, so we need to know what is our superpower 
<laughs> and use that to their advantages, okay? And you have to understand what is the challenges. I have to learn, I, the first thing I have to know, what is the difference between being an activist, be, being a lobbyist, um, advocates, you know, adv like you have to know what is the difference. I do a lot more advocacy work when I was young like you all. Yes, I, every time I'm angry, I would like do a protest. I say, who want to get together and go out to this place and uh, we're just going to scream on a megaphone and just shut down a, a, a block of road. You know, like that's an activist work. You need that too. Um, and, but you have to understand the power that come with that. Um, because if you do an activist work and you don't have an advocacy group that can help rally behind that and have that conversation, how to negotiate, how to lobby on, you know, on ordinance, that, that's another thing that you need to know. So then understanding that the challenges, and I can't be all, you know, I used, I used to be an activist. Now I don't do a lot more activists. I do more advocacy work. Um, I'll go up and down the hill you know, um, and lobby on things, you know, so making sure that how strategic you are in that. Then we have other grassroots group that is doing that. But once in a while, I would still make a sign and go on the street of the like intersection and just hug if you don't like this. <laughs> so yeah, it kind of give you that fire, your burning desire. Um, so as long as you have the burning desire, then I bet you any challenges, um, you can overcome it. Wow, thank you so much. Oh, Carrie, did you want to say one more thing? No, I just wanted to thank Nina for this interview, um, for taking the time to do this interview and for gifting us with so many quotable quotes about not being afraid to be angry, for building our own chair for the table and you know, that, that we can't be what you can't see and to not be afraid to ask for help. So we just want to say thank you for taking the time to do this and for answering all these questions so eloquently. We really appreciate all that you do. Thank you so much, Nina. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. The honor is mine. And I definitely want to continue network and connecting with all of you. Yeah.